Hello students, this is Pathology Chapter 3, Part 3. Fixed Drug Eruptions. These are lesions that appear in the same site each time a drug is introduced. They generally appear suddenly after a latent period and subside when the drug is discontinued. They may be single or multiple, slightly raised reddish patches, or clusters of macules on the skin or sometimes the mucous membranes. Occurrence may include pain or pruritus. This is a type 3 hypersensitivity. Immune complexes are deposited along the endothelial walls of blood vessels. Inflammation causes vasculitis with damage to the vessel walls. This creates erythema and edema in superficial layers of the skin or mucosa. Treatment includes identification and discontinuation of the drug that is causing the reaction. Erythema multiforme is an acute, self-limited disease that affects skin and mucous membranes. The cause is not clear, but it may be a hypersensitivity reaction. Typical appearance is seen on the image on the right. There are target or bullseye lesions, which are concentric erythematous rings alternating with normal skin color. Here are more examples of the lesions of erythema multiforme. Stevens-Johnson syndrome is the most severe form of erythema multiforme. It's more extensive and has more painful oral lesions. Genital mucosa and mucosa of the eyes may also be involved. The lips are generally encrusted and bloody. The diagnosis of erythema multiforme is based on clinical features and by the exclusion of other diseases. The eye lesions may lead to blindness. Treatment involves removing the cause if possible. Topical or systemic corticosteroids and systemic antiviral medications. Lichen planus is a benign chronic disease affecting the skin and oral mucosa. The cause is unknown. Lesions have a characteristic Wickham striae. In other words, they have lace-like or spiderweb-like stripes or lines. It is most commonly seen on the buccal mucosa, but the lesions may be on the tongue, the lips, the floor of the mouth, and the gingiva. It is present in about 1% of the U.S. population, most common in middle age and slightly more common in women. Types of lichen planus include reticular lichen planus, which is the most common form. There's also erosive and bullous lichen planus, where the epithelium separates from the connective tissue. Disquamative gingivitis can be associated with lichen planus. The skin lesions are papules that are 2 to 4 millimeters in size, most commonly in the lumbar region, the flexor surfaces of the wrists, and the anterior of the ankle. The diagnosis of lichen planus is usually microscopic. The epithelium is generally parakeratotic. It is either hyperplastic or atrophic. A degeneration of the basal cell layer of the epithelium is seen. A broad band of lymphocytes is seen in the connective tissue. Separation of the epithelium from the connective tissue is seen in erosive areas. It may also be premalignant. 
When symptomatic, lichen planus is treated with topical corticosteroids and meticulous oral hygiene. Discontinuation of drugs that may be causing the condition is also included. The patient should receive regular oral examinations. A biopsy of suspicious lesions is necessary because these patients may be at increased risk of development of squamous cell carcinoma. Reactive arthritis, or Rider syndrome, is a classic syndrome which includes arthritis, urethritis, and conjunctivitis. An antigenic marker called HLA-B27 is present in most patients, meaning there may be a genetic influence. It is probably an abnormal immune response to a microbial antigen. In Reiter's syndrome, you may see abscess ulcers, erythematous lesions, and geographic tongue-like lesions. Langerhans cell histiocytosis is also known as histiocytosis X. Microscopically, you see Langerhans cells and eosinophils. The acute disseminated form of LCH is known as letterer Siva disease. It usually affects children younger than three years of age. There is no significant oral involvement. It resembles a lymphoma and may respond to chemotherapy. The chronic disseminated or multifocal form of LCH is referred to as Hanschuler Christian disease. It affects children younger than five years of age. You can see radiolucent areas in the skull Exophthalmus and diabetes insipidus may be present. It may also include gingivitis, halitosis, unpleasant taste, mobile and sensitive teeth, early exfoliation of teeth, non-healing extraction sites, and bone loss. Eosinophilic granuloma affects older children and young adults. It involves the skull and mandible and may resemble periodontal disease or periapical inflammatory disease. The treatment involves surgical excision and radiation therapy. Autoimmune diseases that affect the oral cavity include Sjogren's syndrome, systemic lupus erythematosus, pemphigus vulgaris, mucous membrane pemphigoid, Bullis pemphigoid, and Bechet syndrome. Sjogren syndrome affects the salivary and lacrimal glands. It results in a decrease in saliva and tears, causing a dry mouth or xerostomia, and dry eyes or xeropthalmia. Keratoconjunctivitis sicca causes damage to the eyes. Sjogren syndrome may be associated with other autoimmune disorders. Primary Sjogren's is when it occurs alone, and secondary Sjogren's is when it occurs with other autoimmune disorders. It affects both major and minor salivary glands. Parotid gland enlargement occurs in about 50% of the patients. There is oral discomfort caused by the dry mouth. Lips are cracked and dry. You may see a loss of filiform and fungiform papillae on the dorsum of the tongue. They are at high risk for caries, periodontal disease, and oral candidiasis. A biopsy of a patient with Sjogren's syndrome reveals the characteristic appearance of the major salivary glands that are replaced with lymphocytes and the presence of islands of epithelium called epimyoepithelial islands. Minor salivary glands show aggregates of lymphocytes surrounding the salivary gland ducts. In some patients with Sjogren's syndrome, the Renaud phenomenon 
a disorder affecting the fingers and toes may also occur. Both cold and emotional stress tend to trigger the reaction, which is characterized by an initial pallor of the skin that results from vasoconstriction and reduced blood flow. The initial pallor is followed by cyanosis, which occurs because of the decreased blood flow. When the skin is rewarmed, the blood vessels dilate and the hyperemia results in a reddening of the skin. Finally, in minutes to hours, the color returns to normal. The Raynaud phenomenon can occur alone or in association with autoimmune diseases other than Sjogren's syndrome. Patients with Sjogren's syndrome may also have myalgia, which is muscle pain or tenderness, arthralgia, which is joint pain, and chronic fatigue. Twenty percent of patients with Sjogren's syndrome will have this disorder. Ninety percent of Sjogren's patients have a positive response to rheumatoid factor, an antibody to IgG present in serum. Rheumatoid factor is an antibody to an antibody. Other autoantibodies, anti-Sjogren syndrome A and anti-Sjogren syndrome B, are also present. Diagnosis of Sjogren's is made when two of three components are present. Xerostomia, measurement of salivary flow and biopsy can help. Keratoconjunctivitis sicca, confirmed by eye examination and rheumatoid arthritis. For most patients, the course of the disease is chronic and benign, but these patients are at risk for the development of other, more serious diseases. Sjogren's syndrome is treated symptomatically. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents for the arthritis, the patient may need corticosteroids and immunosuppressive drugs for severe cases. Salivary substitutes for xerostomia, such as humidifier, sugarless gum, or lozenges, and pilocarpine. Glasses and or artificial tears to protect the eyes. Excellent oral hygiene fluoride, and frequent recare appointments. Systemic lupus erythematosus, or SLE, is an acute and chronic inflammatory autoimmune disease that has no known cause. It affects women eight times more frequently than men and predominantly during the childbearing years. It is three times more frequent in black women than in white. SLE is a syndrome with a wide range of disease activity. It is usually chronic and progressive with periods of remission and periods of exacerbation. Autoantibodies to DNA are present in the serum and it may have a genetic component. The clinical features of SLE include skin lesions, which occur in 85% of individuals. There's a butterfly rash on the bridge of the nose. There may be erythematous lesions on the fingertips, and arthritis and arthralgia are common. Oral lesions accompany skin lesions in about 25% of patients with discoid LE. Erythematous plaques or erosions may have white stria resembling lichen planus but are less symmetrical. Medical consultation may be needed before dental treatment. The diagnosis of SLE is based on multi-organ involvement and presence of anti-nuclear antibodies in serum. Treatment may be accomplished with aspirin and anti-inflammatory drugs, hydroxychloroquine, and corticosteroids along with immunosuppressive agents. This concludes Pathology Chapter 3, Part 3.